In today's lesson, we're going to look at conservation of momentum. Um, in this picture, you can see two rugby players colliding with each other. Um, in this lesson, we'll look at some simple physics and we can work out um, what their combined speed will be after they collide and in what direction they will go. So conservation of momentum means this, and you need to learn this definition. The total momentum before an event equals the total momentum after the event. So momentum before equals momentum after. Two events that you need to know are collisions and explosions. OK, let's start with collisions. Um, for a collision occurring between two objects, the total momentum of the two objects before the collision is equal to the total momentum of the objects after the collision. Now, there is a comp it looks complicated. There's, there's an equation here. It's got lots of different numbers in it. But this is really very, very straightforward. And I'm going to show you how this works by doing some examples with you on the next few slides. The kind of collision that we're going to be investigating is what we call an inelastic collision. It's where two objects collide and then stick together and move off together. So this example um, is shows Granny and her grandson um, roller skating. I know it's a slightly silly example, um, but we're going to look at the momentum before and the momentum after. Now you'll notice that um, Granny is skating along and her little grandson is not moving to start with. She then skates along, scoops him up, and they move off together. So this is an inelastic collision. So let's do some simple maths with this. So Granny at the beginning, her momentum, we use P equals mass times velocity. Okay, sorry about the quality of my writing, but this is, I'm just using a, a mouse to do this. So Granny's momentum is 80 uh, times 6. Okay, now I'm not using a calculator, but I believe that is 480. Okay, that's Granny's momentum beforehand. P equals 480 kilogram meters per second. Okay, I'm not going to write the units down, a bit complicated. The little boy's momentum, well, it's just 40 times nothing. So in total, he's got zero momentum. He's not moving. So his momentum is zero. Okay, so the total is 480 kilogram meters per second. That's before for the collision. Now after the collision, okay, they stick together. Uh, I'm going to do this in a different color. I'm going to do this in purple because we are now after the collision. So I'm going to draw a line up through the middle there after the collision. And we're going to apply the same equation, P equals MV. Okay, P equals M times V. Uh, this time they're stuck together. So the total mass is 80 plus 40 which is 120 and we don't know what speed they move off at okay we don't know what v is v is a question mark okay but we know that okay if i put another line under this we know that um the two momentums we know that this momentum and this one must be the same because momentum is conserved. Therefore, 480 must be equal to 120 times V. And therefore, V must be equal to 4. There's the answer down there. V must be equal to 4. Okay, the next situation that we need to apply conservation of momentum is to explosions. Explosions come in different types, don't they? You can have an, a bomb exploding, you can have a gun firing, or as in this picture here, you can have a large artillery piece being fired. But the important thing 
for all explosions is that before the explosion, uh, the bullet or the shell and the gun itself remain stationary and then they fly off in opposite directions. So a gun will recoil and, and an explosion will explode in all directions. And that's important to think about as we go through an example. OK, um, this equation looks a bit scary, but it's very, very simple. So for an explosion, the total momentum before the explosion is zero. And after the explosion, the total momentum of all the fragments is still zero. Hard to believe, isn't it, that an explosion, all the fragments, if you add up all the momenta of each fragment, it comes to zero. But that's very, very important to understand. So here we go. Here's the momentum before, and that must equal zero. And this is the momentum of all the bits afterwards, and that must be equal zero as well. OK, here's another example, a silly example of an explosion. It's a, a cannon firing a clown, kind of silly circus act. Maybe you've seen something like this, the human cannonball. Now, in these situations, um, the clown will get fired forwards and the cannon will recoil backwards. Um, the important thing to remember is that before the clown is fired, He's sat inside the cannon, he's not moving, and therefore the total momentum is zero before. So total momentum, this is before. Okay, my writing isn't very good because I'm using a mouse pad. Before. Okay, the total momentum is zero. Right, let's draw a line and let's look at what happens afterwards. Okay. Now the total momentum must still be zero. Okay, it must still be zero. Conservation is the same before and after. Therefore, these two momenta, the momentum of the clown, must be equal and opposite to the momentum of the cannon. They must cancel each other out. We know that if things are moving backwards, that's negative, And if things move forward, that's positive because momentum is a vector. And velocity is a vector. So we're going to have here 500. We know that 500 times V. So this momentum here must be equal and opposite to this momentum here. So 500 times V must equal 100 times 15. Okay. So that momentum there is 100 times 15, and that is 500 times V. We don't know what V is yet, do we? So let's work out what it must be. So we've got 500 V, okay, and equals 100 times 15 is 1,500, okay, and therefore V must be 3, because 3 500s make 1,500. Now, before we move on, though, it's not just simply three. The direction is important. So it's actually minus three because the gun recoils backwards. So V equals minus three because it's a vector and it's going backwards.